Hey guys, it's Kaz here, okay, Cats and Camera, and today I am doing my February wrap up. And here's the thing about February I read 20 things. Yeah. The booktube games happened, and then a, a lot of reading happened. So I'm gonna just jump straight into this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because otherwise we'd be here for a million years. But I have been writing reviews for everything I read on Goodreads, so check my Goodreads down below. Friend me if you want. And yeah, if you wanna know more of my feels, hopefully. You can find them there. Let's just go straight into the first book, which was Boy Meets Hamster by Birdie Milano. So this reads sort of like a middle grade-ish. I think it was a middle grade. I think the character was like 12, 13. And it's about this kid who goes on holiday with his family to Cornwall and he doesn't like it, which I think is lame because I used to go to Cornwall on holiday as a kid and it was really good, so he is wrong. But there, he fancies this boy next door in the caravan next to him. And then there's also this giant hamster that happens. And yeah, it's just a bit of fun. There's a lot of diverse characters in here. Obviously the main character is gay, he likes a boy. And his best friend is mixed race. She has one of those red wine stain birthmarks. His little brother has cystic fibrosis. And there's also a black gay love interest. This was just a really quick, fun, easy read. I'm gonna try and be quicker. Next I read Sideman by James Eric. This is set back in the day in Iceland where it's the Viking Age and there's some magic drifting about. Religion's a big thing. It's when there's the old Norse gods and then the Christianity's coming in as well and our main character has some cool powers and he also likes the boy of the head of their tribe type thing. So yeah, gay Vikings. Next I read Fell Volume 1. This was not that great for me. I felt like all of the storylines were too short and sort of contained into too small of a time for me to care about any of the characters. It's about a detective who goes over to the, the bad side of the city and then there's crimes and each volume is a different crime. Some of them are quite interesting. One of them is set completely in an interrogation room and he's talking to this dude who's done some creamy stuff. I enjoyed that one but in general the main character I didn't feel attached to him, I didn't really care about any of the characters. So it was alright. And some of it just felt like horror and weird shit for the sake of horror -y weird shit rather than being for the plot. Oh, I forgot. The second book I actually read was Hyperspace High Frozen Enemies. I just, it was on my Kindle, so I forgot, but there it is. And yeah, this is just a fun middle grade set in a school in space that has loads of different aliens. And then they go to this museum that's a whole planet and stuff kicks off. It's really obvious what's going to happen. It doesn't take too much to guess what's going to happen, but it is a middle grade and it was just a really quick, easy, fun read. Next, I read Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead and I did really enjoy it. I think I probably enjoyed it a little bit more than I thought I was going to. The characters were fun. There were a couple of twists in there that I thought was going to go the other way, but then didn't, which was pretty cool. I liked it. I've got the second book. I'll read it at some point. There you go. Let's move on. Next, I read Supermassive by Nina Russing. But yeah, this is a gay contemporary set in Norway. A main character comes back after four years. His mum went missing four years ago. He's come back to Norway. There's a boy he kissed from that back then and they become friends again, but neither of them talks about it. And mostly it's about him coming to terms with his family life and what happened to his mum and this boy that he likes. To be honest, the romancy bit isn't the main focal point of this. It's more to do with like the family and the learning to accept yourself kind of business, but it was really good. Next I read Bird Meets Cage by Anita Sunday. I actually won this from her newsletter giveaway. And yeah, really small novella about two guys that have a one night stand back in the day and then it goes over the period of quite a number of years, like 10 years, 15 years. I can't remember exactly. But one of them works in the circus and the main character doesn't work in the circus. I often don't really get attached to anybody or care much in novellas, but I did, I did enjoy this one. It is explicit though in a sexual way, so if that's not your thing then definitely keep away. Next I read Sex Criminals Volume 1. I feel like this is one that a lot of people on booktube have already read. I didn't realise it was told from kind of the main character's perspective as if she's telling the readers, which is pretty cool, like breaking the fourth wall. Quite a silly fun concept. Basically, whenever this character has sex and has an orgasm, time stops. And yeah, some stuff happened that will obviously be explained more in the next volume, hopefully. Next, I read Holes by Lewis Sacker. 
This one I'd heard a lot about. I've never actually seen the film either, so I had no idea going into this what it was about other than people dig holes. But it was really fun. I didn't even know that there was a whole sort of somewhat that happened a hundred years ago story that intertwined with this and treasure. But it was definitely really enjoyable and I'm glad I finally read it. Next up I beta read a book for somebody I'm friends with on Goodreads so I'm not gonna go into that one. It was LGBT, there was some cool crime and kidnappy type aspects. I enjoyed it, I gave some feedback, let's move on. After that I read Low Volume 1. Honestly I was, I wanted this to be better because it's by Rick Remender who does Deadly Class which is one of my faves but I gave this three stars, it just there was too much information straight away, it's all fantasy and dystopian and it doesn't give enough backstory so nothing makes sense and everything happens too quickly so you're not attached to any of the characters and yeah, just a bit of a disappointment to be honest. Next up I read The Gateen's Guide to Defeating a Siren by Cody Wagner. Now this one as you can probably tell by the title does have a slight sort of fantastical elements but they didn't really come into play until right at the end of the book so this was mostly just a contemporary about a gay kid that gets put into a conversion camp but then secretly it's actually a camp that lets all the, the gay kids come and be themselves away from their bigoted parents so yeah it's like a fun secret thing but generally it was just a boarding school contemporary and yeah I liked it I enjoyed it after that I read Looking for Alaska by John Green this one I did actually quite enjoy I know some people don't like it I think people see it as pretentious but I'm just reading it as not being pretentious if that is even a thing that you can do. Well basically in my mind I read this and it was about some kids at a boarding school doing pranks and having fun. I'm sure a lot of people read it as a bunch of pretentious kids doing pretentious things and John Green trying to make this whole thing have meaning. I guess it just depends how you read it. I thought it was fun. I didn't necessarily care about the romance. It was just I think the story would have worked fine if they were just friends rather than this being in love with this girl. But other than that it was enjoyable. After that I read Freaks and Revelations by Davida Wills Herwin. This is based on a real life story. In the 80s this gay kid that got kicked out onto the streets by his religious parents was beaten up by a bunch of neo-nazi punks and left for dead and then like 30 years later just by chance he met one of the guys and they realised that that was the guy that nearly killed him and then he forgave him and now they do talks and stuff about forgiveness and acceptance and learning to change and letting people change so I feel like the story behind it was really cool and interesting. I don't think the book lived up to the story there was too much sort of it, it, it goes back and forth between the two characters and obviously you see loads of the home life of both of them like oh he's a mean Nazi punk because his dad's horrible and abusive and he's got a shit life and all that stuff but the actual incident that this is based on happened really far to the end and then I felt like they just sort of brushed over everything that happened in between the kid getting beaten up and then like 30 years later when they meet again it, there just wasn't enough in between about how the Nazi dude sort of changed and stopped being a horrible human being there was a few little bits and bobs but I didn't feel like it showed enough of the actual progression of the characters it was just like this guy is horrible and angry and beats people up for fun and now he's talking at the Museum of Tolerance and that's where they meet and same for the other kid it's like oh he's a hustler on the streets because he was kicked out and then now all of a sudden a stylist to the stars that goes around the world styling people there wasn't enough in between of how people got from A to B but I very much appreciated what the book was trying to do and it did make me read into the actual real life story afterwards which if you want to know what that was check my goodreads because I've linked like a link in my goodreads review of that next up I read The Missing Branch by my sister Kay McLeod don't forget to check out the Constellation series and that is just a little novella going into an anthology which is all based around this place and it was a bit creepy, a bit weird, a bit interesting and then like open ended at the end it was a lot different to her other things it was sort of like urban paranormal with a lot of romancy stuff going on so definitely check it out if you want to see a different side to her writing after that I read Specials by Scott Westerfeld this is the third book in the Ugly series and honestly it was a little bit of a letdown not that I love the series anyway but I felt like this was just sort of rehashing the previous two books it just felt like the same thing but the next version like Pretties is about a character being a pretty and then this one is about the same character being a special and it just feels like it's took the same storyline and it's just oh but now it's it's different but it's not really it's the same you know towards the end there was some sort of interesting things about 
government and stuff going on but in general it was just kind of it didn't feel necessary it felt like the author just made another book just to make it into a series it didn't need to be another book the first a lot of it was the same or padding i wish they'd just taken the ending of the story and made it more of the actual story because it felt like they found out this thing and then all of a sudden they weren't in the thing anymore and then they were doing something else could have been better i gave it three stars next i read the cute girl network which is a sort of slice of life comic graphic novel type situation it's about a girl and a boy meeting and then all of the girl's friends telling him that she shouldn't be with him and giving him reasons and stuff and yeah there wasn't that much storyline it was more just slice of life as i said but i did enjoy it i thought it was pretty decent and then after that i read last winter's snow by hans m hershey this is pretty much a character study and a a country study I guess. It's set in Sweden and takes place over about 35 years and it's just about this guy Nilus who is a Sami. Those are the native people of Scandinavia and it tracks his life for 35 years, meeting a guy, then being together for a long ass time and how the country and the attitudes of people in the country changed over that period of time. So we've got the AIDS crisis in the 80s and then later on it talks about civil partnership and then after that it talks about adoption or whatever and it sort of goes through this period where a lot of opinions changed about gay people and it's just really nice because it follows a couple that's together for a long ass time so they have interactions with people that are like oh people like you oh wanting all the the horrid gay sex and they're like we've been together 17 years go away and yeah it was just a really good book and i learned some things about sweden and when they made stuff legal and decided on things it's just a great book that shows the passing of times and the changing of attitudes. And finally, on the last day, February the 28th, I decided, hey, I'm at 18 books, why not make it 20? So I read Demon Diary Volume 1 and Zombie Loan Volume 1. So Demon Diary, it was really funny. If you've ever read manga, they have that sort of humour in it that's just silly. And then when they have the little chibi characters and stuff. I did enjoy this one. It's about a demon lord who's really shit at being a demon lord and he's just kind of not into it. It's not, I don't want to be all horrid and scary and angry and killing people. He's just like, mm. And his mentor. The thing about this one though, I was really enjoying the story, but there are two extra stories in this and neither of them are about the actual storyline. So I would have preferred it if it was just more of the actual storyline rather than these two extra novellas, I guess. They had a different tone, they weren't as funny, they weren't as silly. And Zombalone is about this girl who can see rings around people's necks when they're gonna die soon and then they get darker and darker and the darker they get, the closer they are to death. And about these two guys that go around killing people that are meant to be dead. And again, I liked this one as well. So there we go, my 20 things that I read in February. I managed to read 4,405 words for the booktube games and then add another 50 for one of the challenges I completed. So all in all, definitely a good reading month. So let me know down below what you read in February or whether you participated in the Booktube's games. Let me know what team were you in. I was in Team Neverland. Don't forget to check out my Goodreads if you wanted to look more into my thoughts on the books because I didn't really say anything about anything. And while you're looking at stuff, I mean, I do have Instagram as well, Cats and Camera Books. So maybe check that out. If this is your first video by me and you enjoy it, then please check out some of my others. And if you continue to enjoy them, then please subscribe. That'd be awesome. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in a few days with another video. Bye.